What's up guys, back for another Dark Souls 1 lore through. Alright, I'm just back from Blight Town and all that. And uh, <clears throat> this is where we were entering before in Ann Armando before I decided to turn back around. And so, yeah, now we should talk about Anne Orlando. And I think that that starts with the Lady of the Darkling. So this bonfire here is already lit. And it is kindled. So we get 10 when we come here. Well, we all know whenever that happens that there's a um, there's a firekeeper associated with it. So either there's one under here or there's obviously someone here. Let's talk to the Lady of the Darkling. Well, you are a rare visitor. Welcome to the lost city of Anorlando, the chosen undead. If you seek Lord Gwyn's old keep, exit here and head straight yonder. If you are the chosen one, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. It's interesting. She says that a revelation will <clears throat> be revealed to me. Um, I don't want to say much about that now, but I definitely want to remember that she said that, although I probably won't. So this is me trying to remind myself. So yeah, this is where Gwyn used to be. That's where he used to live, right across there. In fact, we'll see his like home and where all of his children lived and, and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, maybe this uh, lady in brass armor has <clears throat> more to tell us about herself. Hmm, what is it? What am I? Well... I am the keeper of the bonfire. If not for me, what beacon would there be in this lost city? A gatekeeper and a guide. That is my calling. The bonfires attended by the keepers are special. They are linked to one another, and their flames never die. Yet never shall the keepers of these flames meet. It's not much to say about it, but uh, it's all really interesting information. Um, the keepers of the bonfire, the bonfires are all linked. Um, the fire keepers cannot meet each other. Why is that? I don't know. If you require rest, now is the time. That is, after all, what the bonfire is for. I figured we could repair stuff while we're here. Might as well just give it a once over. Probably be needing all this stuff <clears throat> at some point or another. Alright. Well, um, one thing that I, you know, notice about Ann Orlando is that it looks like it was built for much larger beings than myself. I mean, I know that some, you know, I know that some <clears throat> castles and places and whatever, they, you know, they they try to show their power and, and all that stuff. Um, But, um, you know, I mean, these really look like they were walkways and places for people. I mean, we'll see more of it as we get through here. Oh, wow, I almost got hit by that.
been like various things <clears throat> in this game. These guys disappear when you kill them. They're not ragdolls. That might be a practical thing, I don't know. Oh, come on. I felt that one coming. My SS class is really reinforced now. It's very nice. And let's kill this one for fun. These are the <clears throat> giant sentinels, I think they're like called. And you can get all their stuff, I mean, oh, there you go. Uh, I think you can get uh, their, you can buy their um, armor from a merchant. <clears throat> but uh, let's see what they dropped. Large halber halberd made of old brass used by the giant sentinels of An Orlando. Brass contains traces of lightning, but as the halberd is designed for the giant sentinels, its weight is unbearable. Well, we saw that the Lady of the Darkling was also wearing a brass set. So brass here is highly associated with, you know, the sun, lightning, Gwyn, um, and other things. Now, um, there's a statue here. It's quite interesting. If you notice, the uh, spear is very similar to the one that we saw <clears throat> by in the in the Sunlight Covenant by by the Hellkite Drake, where there was a a battered statue and we could see that it had a spear with like a hilt up on the top and um yeah this is uh ornstein uh we'll be seeing him in a little bit and he's one of the four knights of gwyn um but i would say other than the the weapon the are the rest of the body does not look similar at all. Yeah, we're gonna find a lot of demon titanite around here and and all that stuff because you know this the weapons of the gods. I just love how everything's framed in this game. I mean, every time you go through a door and every time you go over a cliff, they always. As it always has what uh, what um, Walt Disney called the dicky, the thing that kind of centers you in the world that you can see. It's kind of interesting. All right, come on, guys or guy. Let's see if you drop any other cool. Okay, this is definitely something that we cannot do. <laughs> Dark Souls 2 gives you tools or just mechanics that allow you to fight more than one enemy at once. Dark Souls 1 is not such a game. So, if one ever finds themselves fight, especially like these kind of enemies, you know. Best just to back off. Oh, I actually hit him when he jumped. It's kind of 
uncommon. Alright. And so, yeah, we see another statue over here. And again, if you uh, know anything about the game, this is Smo. A little interesting thing about his name. In Japanese, Sumo. It's all Japanese has like phonemes for letters. So the words Sumo and Sumo are actually the same word because of the way that you, there's no just S in Japanese. So when you have an SM word, you would actually do Sumo, Sumo, Sumo. And so this is, I, th I think it's just a reference to the fact that he's a fat guy. I wonder if there's a reason he's so fat. Twinkling. And here we come across another mimic. Now this this actually probably does give a little bit more lore than I was than I was suggesting at first glance. <clears throat> so in the first one on uh, the first chest we found a lightning halberd. Or sorry, a lightning spear. In this we found a crystal halberd. They're all upgraded weapons. Um in particular, the crystal weapon would be associated with Seath, because uh, crystal stuff is related to Seath. But we'll learn more about that later. And uh, if we wanted to go up here, we can go see the uh, Duke's archives. But uh, there's a weird <laughs> game mechanic glow in here, sealed by the Great Lord's power. So I there's you know we've had a couple opportunities to maybe see those, but I just haven't gone there. This is the easiest one to kind of grab. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll obviously keep an eye on those. Uh, there's three that I can think of. One in the demon ruins, one here, and one in... Um, the catacombs. Alright. Here we go. In San Orlando proper. <clears throat> of course, the first thing that we'll find, as we had kind of read about, is that there's gargoyles here. Why didn't I not get hit there? <laughs> I was thinking maybe we would get his uh, get his uh, tail, but I think Gargoyle Helm is new for us. No, yes. Helm of the Gargoyle and an enchanted creature that guarded the Bell of Awakening and the Belfry of the Undead Church. This bronze helm was for mere appearance's sake, as Gargoyle skin is naturally hard. Little in the way of defense can be expected from it. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> it's a heavy armor, but it doesn't actually do any defense. More Demon Titanite! I don't know if I explained what I was saying, but Demon Titanite is here because... Um... There's boss weapons here, and that's how you upgrade them. So if if one were to be, you know, upgrading things here, you would need Demon Titanite rather than the regular Titanite shards that you find around Lordran. 
So yeah, I don't love this mechanic or this thing like where you're kind of like, oh, I should just walk on this area that doesn't look like I should be able to walk on it. I mean, I think, I think some of these are developer messages, uh, so that might help with that. But yeah, a little weird. Something that kind of is unique to this game. Um, yeah, so there's a new enemy. Uh, these are called the Painting Guardians. Uh, as hopefully we'll be able to see. Oh. <laughs> That's also an extremely rare item. Wow. I thought I might even have to farm because we should definitely read it. It's a weird weapon, but, uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look here. Curved sword of Anorlando painting guardians. Unique shape with a flat tip. The guardians who strike down those who dare threaten the paintings attack in a continuous circular dancing motion, a technique passed down through generations. And of course, that's interesting for those who've played Dark Souls 3. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is a main hall here. Um, we can see a couple of interesting statues over there. Uh, there's an item up on that. Oh, is that the item I just bought? <laughs> I think I might have just bought that uh, that sorcery on there. Yeah, we'll see. It might be the other one. Um, but yeah. It's not one of my favorite things again, like, it's just, like, almost perilous for perilous' sake. So what I, what I was doing there is I was just trying to show everyone that uh, you can get backstabbed by those people. I was really just trying to show that. Um, I didn't prep you that I was going to show you that because I just wanted you to be surprised when it happened. Yeah. Double-handed, uh, you can't kill him in one hit. Okay. See, this is the type of place that... And that right there, you're also supposed to... Hit them down, hit down the chandelier so that later we can get that item. Oh. Well, well. Uh, enemy in Dark Souls than gravity. I mean, that was a cause by an enemy, to be fair, but.
Who knew this would be the area? If I kill Ornstein and Small in one try, just remember this moment. Dropping stuff so often, probably because of the the ring, but I'm just so surprised that I got the the weapon first try. Most playthroughs, I never even get that weapon. Don't even try it. Who needs 65,000 souls? <clears throat> no need to have those souls or anything. Join my series, Dying to Painting Guardian, Painting Guardians. Alright, how will I die this time? What crazy ways could we... figure out how to make me die during this. Good. I'm glad I got a second one. Just to remind me. Alright. Oh. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, well, I mean, I was going to come here anyway. Um, so, yeah, there's someone with a big chest up there. I'm sure there's a comment any somewhere about that. But there's two silver knights surrounding <clears throat> this lady who is uh, Guinevere, goddess of bounty and fertility. And um, we find an item up here, which is related to Guinevere. It's just a nice little thing here. This doesn't need to be gotten by any means. It's another divine blessing. That was the same one we got, right? Yeah. And... Um, Yeah. We are in her domain. <clears throat> so anyway. They are really big. I, I mean, it's a meme at this point, but man. All right. I 
There's a lot of circular kind of stairway things here. <clears throat> this is no exception. It's kind of a cool thing. I mean, they, at first they play this as an animation. Um, which is interesting because later it's not an, an animation. You can actually stand on this with... Okay. While it turns. <laughs> not finishing my sentences. Okay, yeah, so... Because I already killed him, or because I already got that weapon, it doesn't drop it the second time. Even though I cut off his tail. Oh, I got the Gargoyle Shield. Nice. It's actually a decent shield. Um, it's got good fire and lightning and good stability. Bronze Shield. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Bronze Shield of the Gargoyle guarding the Bell of Awakening in the Undead Church. Gargoyle skin is tough. Okay. For its Aurelic, uh, it maybe used as a prop because it's a rare example of metal shield that does not reduce physical damage by 100. Um, that's a good point. Um, yeah, and let's, let us actually go and clear this out right now. We're not going to go to the war, the painting, but we're definitely going to go and look around there and, and grab the stuff around there. And then, um, probably after Anne Orlando, we'll go to the painting. I mean, once you go into the painting, you can't come out, regardless of whether you have a means to do so normally. Um... I wonder what shield that is that they're using. I think it's a small leather shield. Oh god, I forgot there was yet another guy here. These things can screw you up. You definitely don't want to mess around with them. With the knives and the swords. Oh my goodness. I'm wondering if it's just because I'm playing, you know, presenting, but I just feel like I've never fought like more than two of these guys at a time. And I'm just, I'm choking. And these guys are dropping nothing. I think it's common to parry like jumping attacks, but you can in this game. Or you can with these guys. <clears throat> Ugh. Of course. Well, give you a taste of your own medicine. And let's see if this is a great magic weapon. Oh, it's Matt. It's great magic weapon. I think I bought magic weapon. Ah, I gotta equip that. We gotta get that going. Cause that'll probably be useful coming out here. Oh, don't even mess around. Uh, that he legitimately missed. Like I was didn't I wasn't able to move, and he just whiffed. Okay. Oh, you dodged me too. Ugh.
There's the spinning. Might as well not take any chances here. See? In that case, not a, a harder one. I just, just, just wanted to have some fun. So yeah, here's like the most mammoth painting ever painted. Uh, I mean, there's probably a painting that size, but it's it's amazing. And um, <clears throat> this kind of indicates that Tarkis was able to get through to Anor and uh, and get through. I think he, you know, he was in the painting, and he and this is him exiting the painting. But uh, do we get to read that armor? I mean, is that armor different than the one we were reading? Oh, I guess. Oh, Helm of Black Iron Tarkus, a knight known for his great strength. Built of a special black iron and providing strong defense, notably against fire, but so terribly heavy to be unwieldy to all but Tarkus himself. Yeah. And we read the... We read the great, the great sword and black and great shield is similar, is different. Great shield of the mighty knight Tarkus, built special black iron, heavier than knight Berenice's tower shield, especially resistant to fire attacks and effective for shield bashing. Huh. As I say, we're not gonna travel into the painting at this point. We do have the doll, which allows us to do it, but I merely wanted to grab his stuff and. Uh, and we can go on. Uh, I have a feeling like uh, I'm not going to be doing well here. Um, I wonder if I should just homeward bone here and then just do a run with 10 Estus. Now that I've cleared out everything. Alright, uh yeah, let's do that this one. Okay. So yeah, this is typically something that I don't particularly enjoy. Uh, about this game is the uh, like the, the silver knight archers here um, uh, I do you know I die quite a bit to them but uh, it isn't necessarily just that I mean I just don't enjoy it that much like I don't think it's a fun challenge there is no items up here, and uh, there's going to be nothing gained from clearing this area out. There's some area, uh, items up over there. Um, so I'm just going to run through this place. Um, yeah, so I mean, here is another indication I just want to point out that they have human sized steps and, like, I mean, I guess a little bit bigger <coughs> godlike steps in the center. Uh, just another indication that. They intended this to be walked by not just humans, or maybe not traditionally humans, but by uh, gods, primarily. They have some architectural decisions. That's where we arrived. All right. fun.
There's another archer there. Oops. And they, uh, there's, uh, there's an item down at the bottom there. It's a, it's a hero's soul. I mean, it's not even, I'm not going to go get it. <laughs> No lore. That's my reasoning. Man, wouldn't it have been fun to have 70 souls, 70,000 souls right now? Rather than... 6, 10? Not even gonna risk it. Let's just grab this. Uh, <clears throat> guess we should. Grab this Kindle. And obviously Solaris here. He was looking for his own son, so I guess it would make sense to come to Anne Orlando. The land of sunlight. I should maybe do maybe do some online play here. Really? Okay, I'm gonna stand behind you. Oh, there you are. You've been quiet these days. Smooth summoning out there. Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You've left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. You really are fond of chatting with me, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings for me. Oh no, dear me, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> I think that's all he says. You really are, if I did. Oh no, dear me. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Go on, Soler. You're a little creepy. So, yeah, uh, now we're here in Gwen's house, essentially. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many of these, uh, I think they're like 500 damage, yeah. I don't know how many of these rooms have like a, a deep purpose or anything, but um, there are some rooms that we can identify. So there's some sunlight metals there. <clears throat> and um, Solaris in the other room here. Let's, uh, let's do the round journey. I think we got enough time to, if I don't die, to do this journey in here. And I'm probably going to get invaded now that I think about it. Um, I'm human, running around in Orlando. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a, a demon, Titanite demon here. He's really hard to kill. I never kill him till the end. I mean, I don't even need, we don't need to kill him, but, um, and yeah, here is a room that, this is Ornstein's kind of trophy room, I would imagine, uh, with all the dragon heads that he slayed. Uh, Ornstein is a dragon slayer and, you know, again, was one of Gwyn's four knights. And so he definitely fought against the, uh, the dragons because Gwyn was the enemy of the dragons. And that's where we can see his trophies, including that huge one up on the top there. So yeah, there's, there's all these mimics over here, which is, you know... 
closer and closer we get to the Duke's archives, we, we start seeing these everywhere. And these have a few items which are worth noting. We have a gold coin. These give us good lore. Not great lore, I don't think, but something. And we have another chest here. It's like, you know, first the first time we saw one was in Sen's Fortress, and now it's like, I mean, there's two right next to each other. So we had a copper coin, a gold coin, and now some silver coins. Well, let's read all about them. So we read about Old Man McLoif, and then we have Night King Rendell. Coin made from silver with the portrait of the legendary Night King Rendell on its face. Even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lordran. So yeah, it just has Night King Rendell on it. There's five of them. I wonder if that's significant. But we read about Old Man McLoif, Night King Rendell, which you know you might you might think that okay, then Night King Rendell might be considered a, a god um, because the other two contain images of gods. Um, we have Old Man McLoif, and then we have a new well, someone we had kind of read about previous, uh, All Father Lloyd. Coin made with gold with All Father Lloyd and his white halo shown on its face. So when All Father Lloyd we read about in Lloyd's Talismans. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to learn a little bit more about All Father Lloyd, but I think this is kind of yet another thing indicating that he's a god. So. All right. What else do we have here? I'm just gonna try to backstab him, but you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna open yourself up like that, might as well. Um, so this uh, allows us to see a better view of Anne Orlando, which is kind of neat, and um, it also gives us a cool view. of an open window here with a uh, little onion man. Oh, he dropped something. Oh yeah. Most of those guys drop the, most of the guys that fire drop that arrow pretty easily. So uh, there might be some lore on the, uh, before we go into here, there might be some lore on this arrow. Oops. Giant dragon hunting arrows resembling iron spears. Used by ha Hakai Goth and his Dragon Slayers. They puncture human flesh easily. Dragon Slayer arrows can only be used with a Dragon Slayer bow. So we learn about Hakai Go Goth. For, I think his name is supposed to be Go, but he's pronounced Goth in the English. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see more about Go. Or goth at another time, and at that point we'll we'll get into who he is and why he's important and all that fun stuff. So yeah, so we're in a room. I would think that this is probably what's kind of cool about this stuff. Um, there's some weird images over here. Um, I mean, like, there's nothing much to take about all this stuff. I mean, I think that these are all relatives of Gwyn's in some way or another. Yeah, this room isn't exactly the best example of it, but there's concept art that they used. So this is probably uh, Guinevere's room. As, well, we don't know, I guess, but that's a picture of Guinevere. And this is a picture of Anne Orlando, I think. And so, as it's being built, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think one of the cool things about this area is that the actual concept art from the actual, you know, developers was used, except for this stuff. I don't know what all those guys are. 
was used in as paintings in you know this area so it's kind of cool to see and you can see in which ways they are um, concept art you know because there's some kind of cool stuff in there but we'll get to that in a second there's a couple more of them we gotta look at but let's go down and talk to the onion knight there he is Whatever can be done. I don't know. What other pickle have you gotten yourself into, Ziegmeier? Ziegmeier. Ah, you again. Let me guess. Were you repelled by the Silver Knight? Ah, oh, don't be ashamed. Tis the fate of Vanguard like you and I. I'll think of something. We can overcome it together. Together, huh? This is quite a fix. We'll need another three. No, maybe five bodies. Hmm. <laughs> quite a fix indeed. This is quite a. We'll need another. Okay. Well, let's see how terrible this is. I always thought like this guy right in front of us should go come first, but this guy always comes first. I don't know why. Just constantly looking at Zigmeier to make sure that he sees that I and I alone is taking out this what he thought would take five men. Well, let's see what he has to say about all this. Hmm. 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 Oh ho! What's on your mind, friend? Wait. You defeated those monsters? Fantastic. I'm saying. This night of Catalina hereby commends you. Take this. As a token of my gratitude. But be warned. Gallantry entails great risk. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a plan. <laughs> no problem, Siegmeier. But be warned. Alright, so you gave us the tiny beings ring. Small increase of HP. Ring made from the ancient of an ancient tiny red jewel. Rings grant powers large and small. Their discovery and effective use can make one's journey easier. So yeah, this is where the archer knights were shooting. Well, no, never mind. Well, you can't see the entrance. Yeah, sorry, I was I was thinking this is the bonfire room down below. That's where you can see. But yeah, here's some cool concept art of Anne Orlando. You know, it doesn't quite match up with what exists, so it's kind of cool to see it in different forms. I think, the, yeah, Sen's Fortress, the three doors on the front. That Sen's Fortress at a very different time, it looks like. And, um,. I don't know what this is. This looks like it could be um, dark, dark root garden or Ulusil or whatever. But there's also that like aqueduct. I'm not really sure what that is. And here's an example of like what comes off across as being very, uh, um, very developer, because there's like it shows for size comparison like what the giants would look like compared to the player character. I don't think they made it that big, but it's kind of cool to see. So I think that this is uh, G uh, Gwendolyn's room. I believe that these just belong to the two kids or whatever. Once again, we get some Demon Titanite. 
And uh, yeah, now that we've kind of opened all this up, let's actually go and um, go through the actual way to to make this a journey worthwhile to reopen the the door that we need to get to the boss easily. Now that guy always dra drops a Dragon Slayer Great Arrow, and he didn't that time. Shame. Alright, well this is where the Demon Titanite is. We're not going to mess with him. And then this is where we kind of open the shortcut or whatever. Yeah, there's lots of dragons here. Worthy of a prize. Might as well not be foolish. Or just in case this guy were to kill me. It'd be weird not to have opened the shortcut and made it all for naught. I'm surprised I haven't been invaded. I am online. Alright, and now we... Uh, Check out this. This is kind of a freebie. We have the Silver Knight. Obviously, for some other person to become a Silver Knight. Yeah, look how big that one is up there. Well, let's read it. Helm of the Silver Knights who protect An Orlando. When Lord Gwyn departed to link the fire, his knights split into two groups. The Silver Knights remained in the Forsaken Capital in service of their goddess. Hmm. Right. So this is kind of what I've been talking about. Lord Gwyn left Anne Orlando at a period. <clears throat> and uh, these guys stayed behind and they served the goddess who is now who runs Anne Orlando. A uh, subtle little thing here, um, if you come back here, they kind of just show you straight up, like, there is a hidden wall here, please find it. Um, but, yeah, so, here's an area where, you know, th there's a lot of maps, or some people think that these are the annals of... Lordran, where all the histories are kept. But yeah, and beat in here. There's some interesting things. You can hear the demon Titanite breathing. <laughs> I was like, what is that? But that's one of the uh, <laughs> piece of paper up from upstairs that fell through and clipped. Alright, so <clears throat> Deep within, within Anne Orlando, we get Havel's Gauntlets, Havel's Leggings, Havel's Helm, and Havel's Armor, Havel's Great Shield, and a Dragon Tooth. And here's another interesting thing. This is another mimic. And we might expect to find another enchanted or ascended weapon. And we find an occult club. The occult club, which... An occult is like basically dark. That is the opposite of the gods. The occult is the antithesis to the gods. And we wonder why that's doing. What is that doing here in An Orlando? In a secret hidden passage along with Havel's gear and weapons and such. Well, let me read what he says and then we'll bring this. Uh, like in fact, let me just go back to the bonfire here, so we can uh, we can just start out the next episode 
Right. Well, let's read through Havel's equipment and see what what's going on here. All right. So first, well, let's look at Havel's Great Shield. Great Shield of the legendary Havel the Rock, cut straight from a great slab of stone. This Great Shield is imbued with the magic of Havel, provides strong defense, and is incredibly heavy. A true divine heirloom on par with the Dragon Tooth. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure we're gonna learn all about this, you know, about Havel or whatever. But you know, it does say that Havel has magic associated with him, which is you know a key thing. Uh, also that, you know, it's all made out of rock. It's the strongest, uh, like, shield and armor in the game. And it's one of the strongest weapons in the game, too. Although hard to wield. Created from an everlasting dragon tooth, legendary great hammer of Havel the Rock. The dragon tooth will never break, as it is harder than stone, and it grants its wielder resistance to magic and flame. So that's cool. It's... A, it doesn't have any resistance, like you'll never have to repair it, and B, it like brings resistance to magic and flame just by holding it. Like, it just boosts those defenses. Just a cool, like, mechanic. Oops. And Havel's Helm. Havel, helm worn by Havel the Rock's warriors, carved from solid rock. Its tremendous weight is matched only by the defense it provides. Havel's warriors never flinched nor retreated from battle. Those unfortunate enough to face them were inevitably beaten to a pulp. So, okay, I mentioned before when we fought Havel in the basement um, that that wasn't Havel, and that's like a popular theory. Now, much like the, um, the ring, it says this name, ring was named after Havel the Rock. Havel's men wore it. Right? So it doesn't mean that Havel wears it. And likewise with his armor, we have Helm worn by Havel the Rock's warriors. So that all indicates that A, there's a bunch of these. Doesn't matter that it's called Havel's Helm, whatever. But the only thing is that in the weapons and then the thing, it says Great Shield of the Legendary Havel the Rock. Like this is Havel's Great Shield. And we come here, and we see, obviously, the uh, Dragon Tooth. It says the same thing. Created from a uh, legendary great hammer of Havel the Rock. So this is just a subtle point, but it's just one of those elements that makes the continuing lore build and build and build and build. I don't believe that that person in the, in the Watchtower was Havel. He was using the same equipment, and he had the same thing. We know that there's more than one set of these armor we know that Havel had a group of people that were fighting with him and you know to me I think that's just a hollow Havel knight I don't think we've met Havel I think Havel is long gone I think he might have rested here in Anor Orlando and that that's his stuff that's his armor that's his weapon set and, and whatnot small point but I think it's it's it is definitely interesting but anyway that's going to be all for this uh, episode and tackling the rest of Anor Lando next time.